Hello viewers, I'm SB and this is Humankind Open Dev. Uh, if you're not familiar with Humankind, this is the upcoming historical 4X from Amplitude Studios, the creators of the Endless Games, uh, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. Humankind doesn't actually come out until sometime next year, but this Open Dev program is the beginning of what Amplitude calls the community-driven development process for the game. Now they've done a version of this with Endless Legend and with Endless Space 2, and in both of those cases, I think the results of the program were pretty cool. Like, in, in Endless, Endless Space 2, the Unfallen faction is the result of community-driven development, and I think in that case, Amplitude and the community together came up with a thing that is both really cool and pretty unique. I'm not aware of any other game that has a faction that functions much like them. So, I have high hopes for this progress, process. I've seen this, seen this have great results in the past. Uh, what Open Dev for Humankind is, specifically, is a series of short, mechanically focused scenarios. Uh, not like not just sitting to, down to play the game for an hour, but really scenarios that are about a single mechanical idea. People who are in the program will play through the scenarios and then fill out a little feedback form that will go directly to the developers. If that sounds like your kind of thing, if you would like to be in, if you would like to get to play the scenarios, if you would like to get to tell the developers what you think should happen with the game, there is a link in the description of this video to the form to fill out to join the Open Dev program. Uh, they've said as they continue to add new scenarios to it, they will also be inviting more and more people. So if you fill out the form but you don't get in right away, don't despair. You will probably get added eventually. Uh, and with that, I think let's just get into it. I think there's only one scenario available right now. I have not been past this screen. So we're going we're gonna to head in here pretty blind together. Uh, if you do want to know a little bit more, though, about the basic mechanical ideas of Humankind... Amplitude did let me play with a pre-alpha build uh, for a couple of hours a few weeks ago, and there's a link in the description of the video to my video about that as well, in case this piques your curiosity. Alright, let's step out to the Towers of Babylon. Standing at the center of civilization, Babylon is, was, and always will be one of the greatest cities the world has ever seen. It's your turn to write a chapter in its glorious history. How will you be remembered? I, uh, pretty well, I hope. Originally a modest Me Mesopotamian uh, city, Babylon, which in Akkadian means Gate of the Gods, became between the beginning of the 2nd millennium and the end of the 3rd century BC the capital of successive empires that dominated the region. Within it, the kings erected in turn walls, palaces, fortress, and temples of ever more imposing dimensions, some of which, as the Hanging Gardens or the Tower of Babel, still feed many myths and fantasies. So, like I said, this is going to be a gameplay scenario, they're estimating like 45 minutes in length, that is really just about one specific idea. I'm imagining, from the era and the culture involved, this is going to be a pretty early game idea, probably something about uh, basic exploration or city management. There's a lot of really cool systems in Humankind. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing how the game develops over time. All right, let me tell you the story of this glorious city, how it began, how it expanded, and how it thrived. Long ago, Babylon was little more than a dusty square and a smattering of market stalls, but its people had big dreams. Grow Babylon, explore its environs, and settle new lands. Expand and fortify the city. The fate of Babylon is in your hands. It's a lot of pressure, man. All right, raise a great city of many souls, protected by many armies. I got it. So do we have a specific objective list, or...? No? Okay, we have 29 turns to make the city of Babylon uh, not tiny and terrible. So, first of all, we had our, our units here, of course, very basic 4x stuff. So you can see a uh, pretty familiar idea for anybody who's played a 4x before. We have some explorable ruins over there. I'm going to split our starting army up, though. Uh, this army contains a single unit only, but is still using one of your empire's generals. So there's a, there's this idea of your arm, your empire having a limited number of generals. Armies that don't have generals uh, cost a considerable amount of extra money upkeep. So it's a bummer to run out, but it looks like they've given us twenty for the purposes of this uh, for the purposes of this experiment. So I'm not going to stress about it too much. Let's explore a little bit more thoroughly by spreading out. Ooh, I zoomed out way too much there. What is this? Is this a resource? Ah, Mercury. Okay, that seems like a useful thing to have. 
stability and science. Uh, I do love a little bit of stability. So when we enter a new area, we can found an outpost. Uh, if you see here on the map, the map is broken up into regions. If you played Endless Legend, this concept is going to be pretty familiar to you. Each region can support at most one city. Uh, we can build an outpost in a region to sort of soft claim it for us. It's not an actual city, and it's trivial for another player to come along and burn down our outpost if they want to, but the outpost being in place will prevent anybody else from settling in the place, and in the future the outpost can become a city itself, or it can be absorbed into a nearby city to allow that city to rule over multiple regions. Uh, I do not want to build an outpost right now, because this is not the tile I would want it to be in, so we're just going to leave these guys... For now, you guys should go check that out, though. Some kind of something over here. Okay, a little bit of science. Uh, at this point in the game, five science is probably a pretty significant amount, actually. Uh, listen, the environment graphics are real pretty and everything, but can we turn on... Is there a grid? Actually, there might be a button for it down here, because that's how it worked in... There we go. That's how it works in Endless Legend. Okay. And our city's not building anything. What do we want to make in our city? We have access to plus four food per number of territories. So like I said, it's possible for a city to rule multiple regions, multiple territories, uh, they're calling them. Uh, so this would be a good thing to build if we were planning to expand out like that. I mean, honestly, just more food early on in the game is pretty good. Uh, let's, let's build a millstone real quick. It gives about the same amount of food right now as a farmer's quarter does, but it takes half the time to build, so seems like a pretty reasonable move there. And then here we have our tech tree, probably pretty familiar to anybody who's played a game like this before. Uh, I can already see this tech tree is a little bit different than the one that was in the build that I played with. Uh, you know, archers are usually a pretty good idea early on. Animal barns allow you to get more food out of farmer's quarters. I mean, if we're trying to improve the size of the city quickly, it would seem that a food focus makes a lot of sense. And animal husbandry leads to cavalry. Yeah, let's let's lean domestication for right now. Alright, we have a construction queue, of course, and each turn uh, our industry is going to be poured into our project until we reach the amount that it costs. Uh, you can also buy out construction. Uh, we have 50 gold right now. You know what? Yeah, let's just buy out that millstone. Let's get that food coming in really, really quickly. It's going to take six turns to research the barns. Uh, you know what? The astronomy house gives food from uh, researchers. So that's citizens that are assigned to science. And also science for each farmer's quarter adjacent. So this is a thing this game does a lot where it, it wants you to build sort of a patchwork of districts such that you're getting maximum benefit out of the adjacency bonuses. Uh, let's start by building a farmer's quarter. Hmm. Okay, this looks like a pretty good spot. So you can see each tile has a spread of resources on it. This is a, probably a familiar idea. Can we turn on all of the yields? There we go. Uh, this is probably a pretty familiar idea to anybody who's played a 4x before. When you put down a new district type, you can see where it says resource exploitation there. It can only gather certain types of resources from the surrounding tiles. So if we put this farmer's quarter down here, say, it's not really very good because most of the tiles around this only have industry on them. Uh, in this spot, however, it is absolutely beautiful. So that's what we're going to do. We'll get, get working on that. It is possible to get all of the resources from tiles that give multiple resource types if you just stack up your quarters in such a way that you're uh, you're exploiting the tiles with uh, with districts that care about all of the different resource types. All right, what have we over here? Uh, we've discovered an animal lair, uh, so it's just going to spawn hostile animals. So we could destroy it, to stop it from spawning them. I think that's probably a good idea, and for that purpose, we probably ought to bring our army back together. My guess is a single early game scout is not uh, not exactly a hugely powerful military force. All right, how much move do you guys have left? Just one? Uh, this should be fine. These armies are close enough that they'll reinforce each other in combat if some hostile animals should come out of the lair. Uh, okay, that is a whole woolly mammoth. I'm assuming that that's like a pretty dangerous animal <laughs> given its size. 
Here, let's, uh, let's give it the old ransack. Alright, so burning down the animal lair, uh, ransacking the animal lair is going to earn us 22 gold, which is a pretty significant amount relative to our gold per turn here. And I'm going to keep these guys close. We'll, we'll fan out and explore a little bit, but I'm a little worried about that mammoth. Mammoths are probably pretty scary. Okay, we have a, another neutral something over here. An army of deer. You know, that's not... Deer are still fairly scary. Alright, our city is set up in this territory. The territory's borders are painted in our empire's colors. Extensions can be built in this territory. When they say extensions, they're talking about things like additional districts that reach out and exploit more tiles around the city. Uh, so if you're familiar with civilization, the way population works in the Endless Games is a little bit different. You are always exploiting any tile that is underneath one of your districts or adjacent to one of your districts. And instead of your people working tiles to get their resources, they work in the city directly on a resource. So you can see right here, this guy is producing four food because people working on food here produce four food each. Uh, we could move him over to science or, or money if we thought that made more sense. Uh, if he's on food, where's our, where's our outputs? Actually, I don't think having this guy on food makes a lot of sense right now. Uh, you can see he's not actually, him being on food is not actually affecting our total growth because the way growth works in humankind is sort of uh, stepwise. So as you can see here, this state will remain in the growth state as long as food production is between 10 and 50. Uh, there is effectively no difference between 14 food and 18 food for us. So let's pull him off and have him work on science. If we were able to push past 50, po 50 food per turn, then our population would be, would be produced twice as fast. But if we're not going to hit the break point, we can have this guy do something more effective. Uh, we also have this power over here that allows us to throw a city into science mode, which converts all of the industry and money production in the city into science for five turns. I think we should finish some stuff before we, uh, before we go messing with that. Uh, ah, our ransacking was successful. Remarkably, the, uh... The animal lair did not fight back. Who would have thought? Alright, so we should probably build an outpost somewhere. Um, this region has a couple of resources. Copper and salt. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. I guess let's, um... Let's have these guys run forward and grab this. We'll worry about that animal lair in a minute here. Found ten gold in the horde. And I'm gonna have these guys fall back and... Uh, this looks like a pretty good place for a city. We've got a nice high production tile. A nice high science tile and a couple of food tiles. Um, it's arguable that this would be a better spot to settle because you have a larger amount of food and industry right there, but I do like the science from the deposit. And we can just build a, a farm out in this direction. I think I'm going to set my outpost right here. Alright, so it costs gold to, uh, to begin the creation of the outpost. You guys have a little bit of movement left. Let's, uh, yeah, okay, we'll burn that down next turn. All right, we have learned domestication. Our increased science focus is, is paying some dividends. How strong are deer exactly? This army has an uh, estimated combat strength of 16. Our guy's 13, so okay. Best we don't get into, into a thing here by ourselves. But now that we've set up the outpost, or we've got the outpost building, we can pull these two guys together and have them have them knock that out. All right, and with domestication, we can now pick up horsemanship, which will give us a 20-strength cavalry unit. Uh, it does require us to have horses, unfortunately. Do we see a... I was about to say a horse deposit. Do we see a source of horses anywhere? We do not. Well, in that case, let's... Uh, most technologies unlock constructible game content... Others unlock a specific type of content called Empire Bonuses. These bonuses are immaterial and will apply immediately across your entire empire. Uh, for example, do we see one? Uh, masonry gives you the ability to force labor, uh, to force your citizens to labor, which is like, you know, not totally ideal. Uh, we could start on city defense to get ourselves an actual combat unit. A combat unit that's better at fighting than a random deer is. 
And that leads us toward copper exploitation. We probably are going to want to be able to, uh, to work that copper. Alright, uh, you're out of movement. I think we're good for the turn then. We're almost done with this farm, right? You know what, let's buy out the last turn of construction. Let's just get that farm going right now. And then, now that we have a farm down, the Astronomy House exploits both food and science. We don't actually have any science tiles around our, uh, around our start here, but I like the idea of putting one of these adjacent to the Farmer's Quarter. Yeah. Get a little bit of, a little bit of building synergy there. And then, you know, we can consider the animal barns afterward. We might want to build another farm or two before we do that, just to maximize the benefit. And we're still good on food growth? Oh yeah, we're still... So we want to watch this. We want to keep an eye on this. If our food growth gets close to 50, close enough that reassigning citizens to it could push it over, we definitely want to come back and do that. Uh, do we want to pull you over to... If we pull you over to construction... It only adds one turn to our research, but it pulls a turn off of the Astronomy House. Yeah, that's probably... probably reasonable. It turns out, uh, finishing building things is pretty important. So, we could connect this to our previous city for 50 gold, or we could turn it into a city itself for 100. Or we just turn it into an artisan's quarter that uh, can extract resources and hand them back to one of our other cities for a smaller fee. But we want to get to this hundred gold. Fortunately, uh, ransacking stuff is certainly helpful. Hmm, do we want to... Alright, so you're just showing us the resource. So strategic resources with a gray icon are used as prerequisites for constructibles. Again, this is probably familiar to you if you've ever played in the other 4X. Uh, luxury resources provide economic bonuses for all of your cities. Uh, so this is an economic resource. This is a strategic resource. You can see it doesn't it doesn't give any bonuses. You just need it to build fancy military units usually. Uh, food and stability up per salt deposit in the empire seems like a pretty handy thing. So do we want to go hunting? I didn't see where those deer went, and presumably they got to be somewhere around here. Okay, hey, that's something. We'll just go, uh, we'll go check that out. Alright, a little bit of gold is very welcome. Okay, and here's that mammoth. A mammoth has the same combat strength as one of our military units. I am disinclined to challenge. Let's, uh, let's back up a step. Hopefully he's not too aggressive. We'll pull, uh, pull our guys together a little bit better, and then we'll, we'll have at him once we can... Once we can double team. All right. It might be worth refocusing our uh, our point of population here. We're very close to having more pop. Uh, obviously, population is always tremendously important in a 4x game, so I think it's nice that they've done some things to make it the case. Um, and I've changed my mind a little bit. We're going to go hunt these deer instead. I think it's nice that they've done something to make it so that the correct move isn't just focus all of your guys on population in all cases, which is a thing that sometimes is the case in 4Xs. Alright, we've engaged an enemy in battle. Uh, if this is a mistake, you can run away if you saw the numbers and decided you screwed up. Uh, if you do so, your army just runs away automatically using all of its movement points to flee. Uh, you can just left click the confirm battle button if you would like to commence the fight. I am a huge fan of commencing the fight. If I know anything about numbers, it's that this one is bigger than that one. Uh, Alright, so we have our deployment phase here where we can set our initial unit up uh, anywhere on the battlefield or just anywhere on our side of the battlefield. Yeah, they haven't marked out the deployment zones as clearly as I would like here. I think he's fine where he is. So he ignores movement penalties from forests, but otherwise has no particular abilities. He's just a guy with these stats. Uh, and because we had a second army nearby, that army will show up to the battle as reinforcements during the first turn here. So every turn there are three battle rounds. Of course, huge battles can last much longer than three rounds and may take place over several turns. As you advance through the eras, the number of battle rounds will generally increase as the number of units engaged in battle rises. So battles get much more complicated and sort of grander in scope as the game goes on. 
Uh, the first Empire to act in battle is the attacker. You just issue a simple order to each of your units, then the defender gets to do the same. Uh, not all units are allowed to move after they attack. I see no reason to do anything other than just smash directly at him. Uh, and then a unit's capability for damage is uh, somewhat limited by its current health. Alright, you can end a battle, uh, end a round at any time by just clicking the end round button, or if you use all of your units, the round, your round will end automatically. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Also, I think I have the combat animations on their default speed. You can, you can turn up the speed on these. Okay. Easy battle. Did we... We did not get anything. I was kind of hoping we'd get some food for that. It's fine. You know, we had stuff to uh, to explore. Oh, we spent all of our movement by battling. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Do we want to pull our guy... I'm oh, sorry, this isn't the right place. Do we want to pull our guy in Babylon over to money to accelerate the building of that second city? I think I do want to make it into a city rather than just an expansion. Uh, at this point, it would still add a turn to the astronomy house. But it does get us the beginning of the city considerably earlier. Yeah, and the food growth from the Astronomy House is not critical right now. It's not actually going to... It's not enough to change the speed of uh, our population generation by itself. It is going to give us more food, of course. Alright, so our guys went and explored that and found us a warrior. Cool. Cool. Uh, to represent the challenges of logistical support for armies, your empire has a limited number of generals. Obviously, for the purposes of this uh, scenario, they've given us way more generals than we need. We really don't have to worry about this mechanic right now. Uh, so, even better exploring. Just really, really fan out. Uh, you are going to come down here and help with this mammoth, though. Somebody, somebody has to fight this mammoth. Should I be using the combat-focused units for combat purposes... While using the scouts for scouting? I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> I guess I can see why you might think a thing like that. But it's too late. We've gone too far. And see, somebody's got to fight this mammoth. So in the end, this makes total sense. Definitely not a misplay on my part, obviously. Uh, can we... Hold on a second. Okay, we can, we can move the map like this considerably faster than just scrolling with the arrow keys. All right. So one more turn until we can convert that uh, that outpost. Oh, what is that? Oh, that, that's probably... No, that is not the mammoth. That's just a random deer. The game's trying to educate us that we can buy things out, but we know what we're doing. We're old hands at this. We, we have a plan. All right, so one deer we should be able to take on pretty easily with just a single scout. Let's go ahead and do that. Aha, horses. Uh, yeah, please. Please confirm battle. Uh, there's probably a way to to auto combat. Obviously, these these uh, early battles where you're just like a scout fighting an animal are simple enough that, <laughs> that auto combat would maybe be advisable. All right, can you take on? No, do not fight the mammoth. Unwise. I just want to get over here and explore this. Oh, yep. There's a great big cliff face in the way. Well, the mammoth's probably not hostile, right? We'll just. So we'll just squeeze by him here. I'm sure he won't mind. All right. Babylon is continuing to build, and this turn we have enough money to convert this into a proper city. That's going to take three turns, and then it'll... It's, it's in position to exploit an awful lot of resources. We should get a lot of stuff done very quickly there. All right, city defense complete, and we're just going to continue on to copper exploitation and the ability to make better units, obviously. Uh, the forge helps with industry, which is obviously pretty important, and it requires a copper to build. I think that's a reasonable direction to go here. Uh, let's just pull this real quick. And then we probably... Wow, that was a pretty good find. We probably want to move our population around a little bit. So let's see. We're not going to be able to push to 50 food growth. 
I think it might be a good idea for us to just industry focus for the moment. So you'll notice each resource has a maximum number of points of population that can be assigned to it. We can increase that with, uh, with certain buildings. You can see a maker quarter lets you put one extra worker on, uh, on industry. That's why our food is at three now instead of two. Uh, yeah, we'll just get this done. We'll let the overflow flow into whatever we choose to build next. We don't have to decide that right now. It will be banked for next turn. All right, give me more free stuff. Okay, 10 science is welcome. There's some pearls out there. I don't know if that's, uh, if it's reasonable for us to be thinking about things that are off the north coast of the, uh, the landmass. Something tells me we're not going to actually expand up there quick enough for it to matter. All right, so you guys, I mean, we should continue to fan out. We've lost sight of the enemies that we wanted to fight. Oh, hold on. Oh, never mind. There's a, there's a thing over here as well. And I don't think I really want to fight the mammoth with, with just the scouts. That seems unwise. Thing had a lot of combat strength. All right, so we've got another... Let me turn off some of these displays here. All right, so we've got some pretty good resource exploitation coming in on Babylon. We're pushing up to 21 growth with no population assigned. So it's not entirely impossible that if we kept pushing this, we could make it to 50. Uh, your special affinity action is available. They really want us to go into science mode. I mean, I suppose we could. We're not really, I think, too concerned about... Like, what, what would we want to build right now? I mean, we would just want to continue expanding our food and science cap uh, capabilities, right? Uh, a maker quarter up here obviously makes a lot of sense. We have a lot of production tiles in this direction. What are the adjacency bonuses for this thing? Okay, it just likes to be next to other maker quarters. So like we could build one here and then one there, and that would be pretty effective. You know, honestly, I think I like this. This, this five industry tile over here is a pretty big gain. So we'll stay, we'll keep people focused on industry for the moment. And we have here an event. A melody for every occasion. In the teeming, iconic city of Babylon, musicians are a celebrated part of the local culture with a long history and holy rites. They bring nobility to religious rituals, jollity to palace celebrations, smiles to the sick and ailing, courage to marching armies, and distraction to the gods we assume. Alas, they are still too small in number, especially the good ones. And now word of their renown has reached across the empire. Lords, priests, commanders, among others, are grousing that their city deserves such artists too. How will you satisfy them? Well, uh, we could just, we could just muster up a bunch of uh, musicians from Babylon and send them elsewhere. Babylon will become parsimonious for 10 turns. Hey, that seems like a pretty good bonus. But they may distract learning, so could have unexpected consequences. Could fire another event in a few turns. Or we could just make every city build their own institutions of music, which is costly, but will make Babylon overproductive for ten turns. Yo, that seems pretty alright. Um, minus 60 wealth, obviously, is a little bit of an issue. Uh, you can go negative on money from things like this. If your money is negative, you lose stability in your cities. It's not like a it's not like a huge problem. I I think we're gonna go this way. All right. So uh, let us. They really want to tell us about our affinity, but we're very focused right now. Uh, let's talk about stability. Right now, stability is trending downward a little bit uh, on account of we're broke. Does it say exactly what the stability penalty is? No. It's not showing one yet. Obviously, we have a we have a minus stability penalty for just from having a city. Uh, this is a way of making it so you have to manage your stability carefully as your empire grows. Uh, I'm assuming that the stability penalty for us being broke won't show up until next turn. But at 53%, we probably don't have to worry too much. As long as we can keep it above 30%, we won't suffer any negative consequences. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, we found ourselves some additional money. Okay. And also a new thing to burn down. Hooray! I mean, that's just free money, right? 
that's going to fix most of our money issues right there. Understood. All right, and what is this? Okay, a little bit of science. That's fine. It's not, not quite as exciting. All right, I think we are we are all out of notifications here. So I think we're going to reassign... Yeah, let's reassign both of them from industry to money. Just get this fixed right away. Or honestly, you know what? It might not be necessary. Our stability is in a pretty good place. Yeah, we'll just ride it out. We'll, we'll let our city's natural income fix the negative. Yeah, see, we're, we're good already. That way we can stay very focused on getting this Maker's Quarter built. Uh, you know what? There's still some territory down here that we haven't seen. I mean, it is real pretty. I don't know how useful it all is, necessarily. There's a cave here, which I guess is giving a little bit of extra science, it looks like, from the tile yields. It's not terribly exciting territory, but it is very, very pretty territory. I think the game looks awesome. Some hot springs. Wow, that is a good tile. It's a shame that we definitely will never be anywhere near that. Uh, so in a lot of 4X games, movement around rivers can be a little tricky. In this game, moving onto rivers is expensive in much the same way that like moving onto or over rivers is expensive in a lot of games. But once you're on a river, you can move up or down the river uh, much more cheaply, which is nice. All right, there is no administrator assigned to your city, meaning production is diminished. Uh, like generals, you have a limited number of administrators. I think it's fine to, to have this administrated. Uh, it costs money to pull an administrator, uh, you know, presumably so that you could use them somewhere else. Uh, let's build our cell. Let's build a, a basic millstone. This is a nice, cheap way to get a whole bunch of food coming into the city. Uh, we're at 13 growth with our citizen on food right now, so once the mi once the millstone is finished, we can pull this guy off of food without it affecting our growth level, which I think is probably a pretty good idea. We did, in fact, successfully plunder. All right. We now have the ability to actually exploit this copper. Just wild deer running around all over the place, which, you know, it's not... It's not a huge threat. Right. My suspicion is the deer will probably not damage our city. Yes. All right, a little bit of cash. Uh, is there anything else over here? That's something over there in the dry grass. Let's go find out. And you guys... Okay, it turns out there's wealth all over the place. Apparently animals are just full of the stuff, and they very irresponsibly leave it all over the place when they die. Uh, I don't know that we have... Do we intend to form another outpost? Because if we do, then probably we ought to save money for that. If not, we should just buy stuff out. I, th I think we'll hold off. We'll hold off on that. Uh, let's... Let's get ourselves this salt deposit because obviously the salt bonus is pretty good. And then now that we have our copper and some basic stuff to do with our copper, the question is, do we want to push for horsemanship and go grab those horses, or do we want to maybe take a different branch? Plus one food on exploitations per adjacent river. We are... Uh, are we built on a river? No. No, but we could be. Yeah, if we wanted to come over here and take control of this Mercury, I think that's what these guys are going to do. They're going to come back and uh, set up an outpost on the river. And if that's the case, then irrigation makes a lot of sense. Plus, it's a pretty fast research. And, you know, who doesn't like food? Well, we got ourselves another event. Creating an institution dedicated to music in every city was an excellent idea. Performers re produce refined, delicate compositions, and many pay for the privilege to hear them play. Music is a serious, artful practice carried out by trained adepts. The strict classical musical culture is well established. Okay, cool. We've, we have created a euphony. 
Uh, they still really want me to do my scientist affinity. I guess we could. I'm having fun actually building stuff, though. Uh, plus two money per number of territories. I guess that would be all right. We don't yet have the copper necessary to build a forge. How long does this last? Five turns? Hmm. You know, we don't have anything terribly pressing to build here. I mean, obviously, we can just keep developing more industry. Uh, we could expand out this way. You know what? Maybe we'll go into science mode. There's certainly some science to be earned. So it's going to turn industry and money production into science. It doesn't touch our food production. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Alright, for five turns it will provide you with science only, and it's producing an awful lot of science. We're going to learn a lot of text very quickly here. Right, you guys should fall back to... hold on, let me... let me turn on the tile yields here. What is the right tile to actually put the city on? Uh, we definitely want to be exploiting that right away, that's a pretty good one. So I guess we're not going to be able to build the outpost until next turn anyway. Uh, I mean, like, this isn't terrible. It's right at the edge of the region, and a city cannot exploit a tile that's in a different region. So settling right here would be a little bit of a shame, because it would mean we'd only get six initial tiles instead of seven. But it does get us that and that, which are both, I think, pretty compelling. Uh, another thing we could do, I guess, is settle here so that we get the cave tile plus the, uh, plus the waterfall. You know what? I think that's what we're going to do. That's where we'll, where we'll settle next turn. I will just expand out and grab the other one. If we even have time. Alright, the good news is we're doing a really great job of just plundering all of the world's resources. Oh, look at this area. I think the graphics in this game are pretty excellent. Okay. I think we're doing, yeah, we're doing useful stuff here. Every Everybody's working hard. So, of course, irrigation is complete because we are going to trivially complete any research we set our minds to at this point. Uh, let's get that outpost going. So you can see an escalating wealth cost. Each new outpost costs more. Uh, we have a new event. The invention of the calendar heralded a glorious day in the Empire's history. Now, with two major cities and numerous farming affairs needing to, needing to be harmonized across the land, it is time to standardize the calendar. Traders must have an easy means of synchronizing their activities. By what means do you wish to track the days? Okay, so this is going to have no immediate effect, but it might uh, it might mean something later. Uh, let's go for a lunar calendar. You know, just to mix things up a little bit. I wonder if we'll have time to see the effects of any of these things in... Uh, in this scenario. So this scenario is obviously about the like early game expansion mechanics. Uh, what does the wheel do for us? Automatically creates roads. You know, roads are not a bad idea. It also gives us access to chariots which require horses and copper. Uh, they're pretty fast and pretty powerful though. Writing gives us food market and the house of scribes. Takes us in the direction of philosophy, which will give us another administrator. You know what? That might actually be a good idea. Let's uh, let's grab writing on the way to philosophy. Oh, actually, are we going to be allowed to research these? Because we're in the... this is era two. Uh, actually, it looks like... Yeah, okay, the lock icon is, is on anything you don't have the prerequisites before uh, for, even if it's in your era. So yeah, I think we'll be able to take on philosophy. Because we legitimately might end up with three cities. We're doing, we're doing a pretty good job of developing here. Alright, go grab that. Don't worry too much about the deer. And I don't know exactly how expensive it's going to be for us to convert that outpost into a city. I don't know if it's going to be the same hundred as it was last time, or if the conversion cost will go up along with the cost for establishing the outpost. I guess we'll find out. Uh, 
All right. Uh, is there anything really for you guys to do? We saw another... Yeah. There's another loot thing here. A ruined shrine full of science. Some kind of science shrine. I suppose we could come over here and just prepare to fight wildlife. That might be helpful. All right. One more turn until we actually have an outpost. And we are really firing a lot of events here. With the Empire thriving, I guess, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces catching your eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, you play the game under instruction in your palace court, but the event has a sting in the tail. The game is reckoned to be a form of divination as well as entertainment. Gasps could be heard as the game's prophecy became clear. You are fated to lose everything. What will you do? I'm not super concerned about the prophecy game. Uh, <laughs> we could pay off everybody who saw the game happen. I don't think that's a good idea. We're in a position here where we actually need gold. Uh, let the people gossip. The prophecy will soon be proven false, so we will take a stability penalty for a little while. Or we could heed the divination and prepare for the worst. You know what? I'm going to choose to overlook it, and we're just going to manage our stability somehow. Now, we can uh, potentially build buildings that will increase stability, like the commons quarter, which we have, which we have recently researched here. So plus five stability per adjacent extension. Uh, oh, we're not allowed to build anything yet. We're we're working on uh, working on a thing already. Let's plan this though. Where would we want to put this thing? Uh, it's gonna be no matter where we put it down. It's gonna not do a great job of producing resources for us. Uh, I'm not 100% clear on why it's why it says it's oh cuz I had clicked the wrong type of uh the wrong type of tile is why I was like why does that say it's producing science. So if we put it right here it's adjacent to two different quarters. We could do that here as well. You know what? Yeah. Let's queue that up there. Uh it won't start building until after. We're out of science mode obviously, but let's get it in the queue cuz I do think it's probably a good idea. Uh, we can merge this city with a uh, with a with our selected city. I don't think that's a good idea. I think we know we know what we're doing here. We have a plan. All right, a little extra money, awfully helpful. Now remember, we cannot uh, we cannot get our city to produce more money either while it's in science mode. So we might be a little bit stuck on cash. We might have to just wait for it to generate naturally. We could reassign the one person in Sipar. Uh, which we absolutely should, I suppose. We did finish that si that food building. So he's, ju he's just been sitting there producing nothing for a couple of turns. Oh god, the inefficiency. Uh, yeah, if we're thinking about a third city, let's get philosophy. Plus one science per adjacent maker's quarter. Oh, plus one science on each of your research quarters per adjacent maker's quarter. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot that goes into planning a city successfully, making sure that your carpet of districts um, makes sense. And you can see here each city has. If we look at Babylon, each city has a maximum number of extra districts that it can have based on the population and territories owned by the city. All right, let's see. I mean, I don't see much point in doing anything other than continuing to look for. Look for more stuff with our empires here. In a real game, of course, we'd have to be leery of um, yes, sir. leaving our cities undefended because other players could become a problem. But here, I think the most the most menacing thing around is deer. Uh, I did not mean to assign those guys to that position for their deployment. That's a that's a real tough space to fight from. I think the deer is just going to get away. Or or it's actually kind of coming over here? Well, that seems foolish. Apparently the deer didn't do the math. It's like a very bad idea. You know, wild animals are not known to be the greatest tacticians in history. So you can see sometimes um, new points of interest will spawn in tiles that you've already explored through. Uh, there's a version of this idea in Endless Legend. Basically, the idea is 
you don't want your armies to get static, right? There's there's more stuff for you to run out and do, pretty much always. All right, let's pick that up, because we're going to want that copper for stuff, for reasons. And, oh wow, 250. It might not be feasible for us to do this. We might want to just make this a, uh, might just want to fold this into Babylon, which is remarkably cheap. This does come with a stability cost, and stability is... Ah, oh, you know what, it's fine. We're doing, we're doing an alright job. We'll just fold that in. Okay. So now, the city, what used to be the city center, is now just a district that exploits all of the tiles around it. Uh, we do not actually need the extra administrator now, but... You know what, philosophy's almost done. Let's just finish it for the building. Alright, so we had some move orders assigned to an army already. Just have them finish those. And we'll continue looking around for free stuff. What have we found here? Coffee. Food and stability. Okay. So this is sort of like the way the way that the basic early game exploration and expansion systems work. I think there's a lot, uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot that there's a lot to like. Uh, do you have movement left? I don't know where those deers went, but, uh, deer, rather. I don't know where the deer went, but we can, we can ignore that for now. There's free stuff together. Okay, uh, this is still active for one more turn. Sipar is having an event. The birth of writing has permitted word of your great deeds to be recorded and disseminated among your people, but it has also allowed a person's debts to be tallied. In the past, a person's debts died with them. Now they are inherited by their offspring. However, in the new city of Sippar, the political leadership wishes, wishes to strike these debts from the record for anyone who makes the city their home. What do you say? Uh, if we give our assent... The Empire loses a bunch of money, but we get two population immediately? You know what? I think I'm way into that, especially since we no longer think that we're going to be founding a third city. Uh, we could deny, which, in addition to being like a worse mechanical option, is also, I think, pretty evil. Yes, this is a fine policy, a great idea. Go ahead and, go ahead and wipe those deaths. So, a couple extra points of population is a pretty big deal out of nowhere. Uh, we could really use... Oh. We're gonna have to assign some more people to food to keep ourselves in growth mode. So, just like in every other uh, one of these games, the more people you have in a, food, uh, in a city, the more food the city eats per turn to just keep running. Uh, we probably actually want to build another food extension. So let's, let's reach out here and grab that, uh, that big food tile. That is a ten-point extension. That should do. That, that'll get the job done. <laughs> And then over here, well, I mean, we can't make any changes right now, but we probably want to refocus people on money next turn when the when the science mode ends. Um, you know, you guys should probably just head back. There's still unexplored territory all over the place. Oh, maybe we want to get up on that plateau actually. Uh, you guys are. Oh, it's just, that's just a sheer cliff face I have you trying to climb. That's why, uh, that's why you stopped before spending all of your movement. Alright, more animals. I mean, raiding those animal layers is worth an awful lot of money. So what do we get out of rhetoric? Theater, which gives stability and influence. Science on every tile you're exploiting, that seems pretty good. Uh, or we can come back here and pick up, you know what? I'm going to grab roads, since it's only going to cost one turn. I'm going to get that as our science mode runs out. I think that's worthwhile. Even though our cities aren't very far apart, just a little bit of eased movement seems like a good idea. Alright, did we... Oh, do we have to... We have to manually end science mode. Okay, so it's not that it runs for five turns. It's... You turn it on, it stays on, and you can deactivate it after five turns. I think we should probably uh, deal with stability, because our stability level has 
fallen a considerable amount. We, we could use just like a little push on this. Although, obviously, one thing that's going to be really helpful is if we're not broke anymore. Actually, let's assign both of these guys to wealth because that'll get us that'll get us no longer negative in a single turn all right and we continue to grow and become more powerful everything is going perfectly fine no nobody panic everybody stop panicking uh so i don't think we see much else to do here stupid river You guys just get up here there's a couple of a couple of tiles okay we can maybe redistribute babylon's population a little bit it turns out we don't need that much help let's just drop both of them back over here and what uh what science what researches could we possibly need at this point uh, obviously, trade expeditions not going to be terribly meaningful. I'm kind of looking for like a uh, kind of looking for a trade route type thing. I'm not sure if this game has trade routes in the same sense that like that many other forexes have. It looks like maybe not actually. Uh, well, we certainly don't need sailing. We're very landlocked. Uh, we could go through bronze working to standing army, so we, we could learn how to find iron make ourselves some real fancy military units, but honestly, I don't think we need them. Uh, you know what? A stoneworks. Yeah, stoneworks might be useful. Let's get carpentry and masonry. It turns out we're very good at science. Who would have thought? Uh, we've got stagnation. Uh, are you sure? Because that says 34. I think there might be an error on that one. In fact, we can, it looks like, pull you off of here pretty clearly. Yeah, wow, I'm a little surprised at how... Where did, where did all that food come from? Because we were close to stagnation before. Oh, the problem is I'm, I'm looking at the wrong city. That's... <laughs> I clicked over here, but it didn't actually select Sipar. Uh, yeah, Sipar is in fact stagnating in a way that's a total bummer, man. Uh, oh, and we're at our maximum food already. Uh, well, if we're not able to make it up to 10, then we should really reassign these guys. Because as long as we're above negative 10, it's, it's the same value. Why don't we push you on to... Yeah, we'll push you on to, on to money. So I'll make it a little bit faster to buy out the farmer's quarter, which will help us get above the 10-point threshold. Uh, also, we discovered a whole bunch more science. So now we know everything there is to know about masonry. On account of this ruin we found. You know, over by the river. Come over here. Okay, random deer. Why not? Ah, uh, no. Deploy next to the deer. This time I am not going to let the game choose my deployment zone for me. Oh, they deployed... They deployed far away because they are cowards, but it's okay. It's just a deer. He has horribly wounded himself on our swords already. So all of these combats are uh, quite simple. During the um, the preview event, when I got to play the early build of the game, I did get involved in a couple of battles that were uh, much larger and more complex, one of which did actually run over multiple turns. Uh, and I have to say, it's actually pretty cool. It's a shame we're not going to get to see any of that here. But it looked like, based on the names, uh, probably several of the other scenarios are going to be about combat. So I'm sure we will get an opportunity to see that stuff in action. Okay, uh, we have... We've really done a great job on science. We're kind of, we've kind of researched everything that it looks like is actually actually terribly useful for us. I mean, it does seem like craftsmanship would be okay, but we're not going to be able to get it. I guess we're not really going to be able to get anything meaningful before the end of the game. Here, let's get these two, because these two are the only ones we can complete in the next nine turns. I don't know that it matters much. You know, but if we're aiming for a high score here. Uh, 
All right, a ruined shrine. I mean, we could just turn back around. My suspicion is, though, that we're not we're not going to find a lot more ruins down this way. I'm hoping that if we continue to forge into unseen territory, we'll find a uh, find a greater density of things to search. All right, this is too dear. You know what? Don't fight those guys. If they're not uh, if they're not going to initiate, we should also not initiate. Fortunately, the wildlife around here seems to be uh, pretty pretty passive. Uh, do we have the money now to just buy out the thing at Sipper? We should, right? Yeah. Ah, you can you can force work and just buy things out with population. That's what that does. I don't like that idea very much. That's that seems pretty bad to me. Okay, so now that that's up at six, we can get ourselves back to growth. Uh, we only really need one person on this. I think that's pretty important. Making sure you are you are at least positive on growth as much as possible. Uh, and then we could push even more science. I do love even more science. It does kind of seem to be our whole thing, right? Alright, hey, look at that. We know about fishing. I mean, we could sort of take advantage of that, right? We have a tile near the water. You're able to build a harbor. Harbors exploit all coastal tiles within a two-tile radius and create synergies with market quarters. Hey, actually, that two-tile radius thing is definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. Let's do it right here. Wait, why is this only plus six? Shouldn't this be all of these and also hmm? Well, okay, let's build it there then, if that if that's going to be the most food. We might actually be able to get that city up to the 50 food. Alright, so we have to deploy first, huh? Alright, this time they didn't manage to outrun us. There's very little space for them to play in on that one. We're not even getting anything for fighting. I just like doing it. Why uh, Why not fight when you could fight? Think about it. Alright, that's going to take a second. So yeah, I, I think you get the basic idea. My suspicion is that we're not going to see a lot of shocking new developments in the next six turns. But this is like an opportunity to get familiar with the basic settlement and expansion mechanics uh, if you are not already we might have been able to um have been able to get another city up if i had really focused on it Ooh, mount vesuvius i wonder if this actually makes it more likely for there to be volcanic soil in the area I do not really have a good sense of uh, of what the plan is for Natural Wonders. That was not a thing that I had a huge amount of experience with in the pre-build, or the, uh, the pre-alpha build that they showed us. Man, I like, I like 4X games. I don't know if you would have gotten that from the rest of the content on the channel. Uh, an unrelenting deluge of rainfall lashes down upon the great city of Babylon and the surrounding lands. If the rains don't stop soon, the banks of the great river that threads through the city will burst, flooding the adjacent quarters. With limited time and resources, the choices are stark. What do you do? Well, I feel like we should probably do something, yeah? We can build an expensive dike around Babylon. Uh, you know what? We can totally afford the 120 wealth, too. Let's go ahead and just do that. All right, uh, do you guys see a place where you could... Okay, apparently we had to see all of the tiles that make up Mount Vesuvius before we got the notification. I guess that makes sense. Ooh, what is that, marble? It is indeed. Plus, industry and stability uh, seems like a pretty good luxury. All right, well, we're going to have to... I have to swing around here. Okay, so there's a source of some more money right there. I mean, our, our financial problems are already pretty much over. 
right, we've gotten our last our last research done. Although I suppose after we finish the fishing village, I can just put Babylon into science mode. So we're at 22 growth. We're going to get another eight. Uh, we don't. We still don't have enough people to be able to push our uh, our growth up to 50. But like in a real game, you would have to consider whether it's worth it to do such a thing, right? Like it may well be worth a tremendous amount of effort on account of uh, population. I don't know if you know this, but population is important in 4X games. Oh, we've discovered the Great Blue Hole. All manner of sea creatures stalk the hole's uncharted depths, from sharks to gobies to anglerfish. Angelfish. Angelfish is what that says. Listen, you don't need to be good at reading to be good at video games. That's my excuse. Alright, well that'll that'll get us back on track cash-wise. We can buy some stuff out, I suppose. You know what, let's go ahead and buy this out. I'm going to put this city in science mode. Aha, we are going to be able to finish another tech. Again, think of the high scores. Also, we haven't heard a ton of music from this game yet, but the uh, the tracks we're getting here, I'm liking. I like these. I like these for this purpose. You know, four X music needs to hit a uh, needs to hit an interesting spot of being interesting to listen to, but still matching the tone of the game, which is ultimately pretty contemplative. Uh, and I think this is one of the places that Amplitude has really really done the best in their previous games like endless legend and endless space 2 have the best music in the genre by far the great dyke was constructed in rapid time at your behest and a provident choice it turned out to be too the deluge didn't relent but despite the endless rains babylon and its people and property remained safe only suffering some wet and shivering skin better yet the farmland became even more fertile in the rains aftermath hey that sounds yeah okay plus 10 food that's pretty good actually that would totally allow us to push Babylon up to uh, up to super growth. Actually, we don't even need all the people for that. Uh, here, you continue to produce science. Uh, that said, population growth is locked by science mode. Interesting. It doesn't say that in the tooltip, but you know, it, it's a pre-alpha. We are game mechanics are not set yet. So, this science mode thing, this is not a thing that all civilizations will have access to. Uh, I talk about this a lot more in the video I did previously about the game, but different civilizations, different factions, have different faction affinity, which gives them uh, a diff a, an array of different powers, and also has a big effect on the way that the game is won, uh, which this, obviously, this very, very early game example doesn't really touch on at all. Man, we have so many, so many different things that we can build. <laughs> Here, get a pottery workshop, and then, um, and then maybe, uh, more farming, and then maybe a more farming. Just build some farms next to the existing farms. And let's learn about rhetoric. Let's do the first part of learning about rhetoric. So, like I said, they have a bunch of these little mini-scenarios planned. Uh, each one showing off different parts of the mechanics and, and trying to gather feedback about different parts of the mechanics. Uh, based on the names, it seemed like at least a couple of them are about combat. I mean, we can go back and look at that uh, that main menu and speculate wildly a little bit if we want. Okay, we found another unit. Cool. We actually are finding a lot of wealth this way. Definitely pays to have good scouts. Come over here. Now, now we get a little advertisement, I guess. Hi, 
Hi, it's me again, back to say just a few words. First and most obviously, thank you for playing. We really hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, keep in mind that this is just a glimpse of what the full game will have to offer. The scenario you just played was specifically designed for open dev. Now, if you have time, we would really appreciate hearing your feedback. The game designers have put together a list of questions that would help us make humankind the very best historical strategy game. If you're interested in hearing more about this, come join the community on Games Together. Thanks again for playing, and thank you for leaving your mark on humankind. And again, link in the description for uh, for joining in the, uh, the the Open Dev program if you're interested in that. So I guess they do sort of <laughs> sort of give you a little score list. You could you could push for some high scores here. All right, I think that is a probably a pretty good idea of what to expect from this here open dev system. Hopefully, this is a thing that some people are interested in. I would guess that uh, some of the people watching my channel are maybe maybe interested in a 4X game, specifically a 4X game from these people. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching, and come back next time tomorrow for something different, and we'll see you then.